everybody, this is Steve with Smitty's Flybox. Today we are tying a classic Adams pattern. Fly doesn't really need an introduction, but it's a great fly, all around dry fly to, to uh, mimic really any hatch, mayfly hatch that may came, come off. And it's just, will catch fish. It floats very well, has good coloration to it, and they're pretty fun to tie. So um, I'm just using a size 12 here dry fly hook with a dot thread. And I've just attached my thread and laid down a little thread base. And the first thing I want to do is uh, position my thread in the two-thirds spot of the, the hook shank. So I want this fly, I want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank. And I want the body to be about two-thirds of the hook shank. And the front third of the hook I want for the wings and the hackle. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the wings and I'm going to position those about right there at the two-thirds spot. So... For the wing, as I've, I've sent you some um, some whiting saddle hackle, and some of these feathers are over a foot long, so there's a lot of feather in there. Um, and this is the butt section, all the way down to the tip. So we're going to use this tip section for the wing right there. And so we can kind of work our way back with wings and then we'll tie in the butt section when we uh, actually wrap the hackles there. So, so what I've done is I've just taken two pieces of grizzly by the tip and just position those back to back like that and they'll fork out just slightly. And I've already tied a few flies with these so you can tell those, those tips uh, you know, I had to cut them off and then I'll just reshape the feather just a little bit um, for the next fly. So that's what I've done here. So um, it works pretty good. So we can just keep working from the tip right there. All right, now to tie in these, I've just, I've, I want them to fork out. So I'm just going to position those and I want those to be about the length of the hook shank. So once I have that measurement in there, I'm just going to lay those in there and tie those in, secure those, and then make a few turns back to the left. And now I can snip off the excess. So now for the next fly, I'll just re, uh, reshape these and just keep working. So I just take my scissors and just round those back out. Like so and then I can have wings for the next fly. So that's kind of how that works. All right, so let's just tie down the butt section there. And to get those wings standing straight up, let's just pull those back. And then let's make a bunch of wraps just in front. And that should push those feathers up so they'll splay out like that. Now that's how we create the little wings. You might have a little fluff out the front. I like to just take my scissors and trim that off. Like that. Got a little more there. Okay, so now we've got our wings sticking out there. Nice and pretty like that. Let's make a few more turns and just tie down some of those butts. Oops. Like that. All right, now we're ready for the tail. So for the tail, I'm gonna use, we've sent you some CDL uh, feathers from Whiting Farms. So if you notice, these have super long hackle barbs. So they make great tails for dry flies, even some wet flies like the pertigones and things like that. So I wanna get a nice clump of feathers. So I'm just gonna fan those out to where I can take my fingers and get a clump and you can actually just peel those right off from the stem and then just kind of work those in your fingers till you get a nice even tail like that. So I want the tail to be about the length of the hook shank. So I've got that measurement there. Now I can pinch it with my left hand and notice I have a lot of this butt section here. I'm just gonna trim a little bit of that off 
and now my thread somewhere there in the middle. I can just hold those on an angle, bring my thread around real slow and loose, and it just rolls it right up on top like that. And now I can just hold on to that feather as I tie it down back to our tie-in point directly above the barb of the hook. And now our thread should hang out there. I'm just gonna tie down those butts a little more up in here and just clean up that underbody. And then return my thread right back to that tie-in point at the end of the, the shank. Okay, now we're ready for dubbing. I've just got some Adams Gray dry fly dubbing. So I don't need much. I'm just gonna try to build a nice tapered body from the base of that tail up towards that wing. So I'm just gonna give myself a little section there of thread using my middle finger and my thumb. I'm gonna spin that dubbing onto my thread. Notice I'm not rubbing back and forth. I'm just starting at the top and I come right down. Now I've coated a nice inch or so of thread and I can begin tying that down and I can control that to make a nice tapered body all the way up to the base of the wing at that two thirds spot. All right, now we're ready for our hackle. So I'm gonna use brown and grizzly this time. So I'm gonna take a piece of brown hackle. I like to just clear off a little piece of that stem then I can come in here and tie that down. Two or three good wraps. And let's repeat that step with our, uh, our grizzly. I'm gonna lay the piece of grizzly right on top and tie that down in the same spot. Secure that in. And we'll try to avoid those wings as much as possible. And let's take our thread to the eye of the hook. And now I can take both of these feathers, try to hold those together. We'll begin wrapping this hackle going forward. So I'm gonna make a couple turns behind the wing and a couple turns in front of the wing. Now to tie that off, we're gonna hold that straight up in the air and drop our thread over with our left hand about three times right there at the eye of the hook and try to secure down and capture that hackle. We'll hold that hackle straight up in the air and we'll come in here and snip that off real cleanly. All right, now we're ready for some a whip finish. So you may have a few hackle barbs up in the way, up in the eye of the hook there. So just be careful. And so the most difficult part is to try to make a clean head without tying down a lot of those hackle fibers. And now we'll do our whip finish. And again, we'll come in here real tight and put in a nice good whip finish. Hit that with a little drop of head cement.